from second half hoops, but uh, talk to me through the first half. Well, first of all, Missouri, their defense, right? Five fingers, one fist, as Damian Fishback would say. <laughs> they are connected. They communicate well. They don't overextend, cut each other's back. So that's right. been, it's been difficult yeah. for Arkansas to figure out how to score against that. One thing they were able to do was get on the offensive glass. And 10 offensive rebounds for the Hogs. 13 second-chance opportunities led by Jordan Walsh right there. Joe's opinion does a good job of reading that miss. But it's been Arkansas's aggressiveness to the rim. Make or miss that first shot. You've got to fall. They've got enough athleticism and length to do that. And Sean East, I think, is going to be so key in the second half because he's the most creative scorer that Missouri has. He's the one guy that you can give him the ball and say, go get us something, Sean. And he does that so well. He's their leading scorer right now, four out of five from the field, nine points. So how about Kenyon coming off the bench? for yep. Arkansas and leads him with seven points. His season high is 10. He played just two minutes against LSU in their last game. Well, he, right now, he's their best three-point shooter. That's what he was expected to do coming against that zone. He's also showed that, okay, he can compete on the defensive side. Yeah. You can get him on the offensive rebound. He's a good athlete, six foot five, good athlete. So he gives you a lot more than just shoot the basketball. Once he does add that to his game, uh, you know, he's gonna find some even more minutes. But the threat of him ha having him out there also, Dave, do you see the, like, Missouri's defense now is like, okay, they got a shooter in Kenyon who we got to count for. So that's now when the defense starts looking around, where's Kenyon, and then Devo attacks the ball. 10-0 run by Arkansas. They were down by as many as 17 in the first half. There's Kobe Brown gets to the basket. But Kobe played just about five minutes in the first half because of foul trouble. Starts the second half with a basket. I'm telling you, he hurts you every single way. He gets it on the block and he pass out of that. Now here's that reason. Here, here's that that zone. You want quick passes, decisive passes, attack. Wall step back. Got it. It's a tough move right there against the six eight. Arkansas back to that defense where he's got Ty Mitchell playing right in the middle of that zone. Saying Ronnie DeGray, he's going to shoot the three, we'll let him. Ooh. Hodge and Davis getting to know each other. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a history of physicality in the Mizzou Arkansas games. I played in a couple of them. You guys get to know each other a little bit. Davis with a mm -hmm. swat. I'm sure that there was a conversation leading up to that. Man. I just think that locker room intensity in that Arkansas yeah. locker room at halftime probably took their intensity level up a little bit. <laughs> no doubt. And Hmm. Arkansas is coming off a physical game against LSU. That was a football game. So they come into this game, and Missouri is also a physical, fast team, going to challenge every shot. Uh, so it does put you in a certain mindset. So both those guys picked up a foul. Looked like at the end of it, they were able to look at each other and say, okay, okay. We're caught up there. Hodge pushes the arm. Devo gives him the two-handed shove to the chest. Here's what I want to say. I both got West McCorkin. Right. One says, get off me. The other one says, no, you get off me. And then they both get off each other. But there was, you know, that, that, 
with the initial part of that first Jordan Walls bucket over Colby Brown. Arkansas did a good job. Okay, let's identify in that, that mid-post area. I like Jordan Walls facing up. Now he can see. He's going to shoot over him. It's a makeable shot. 15, 17-footer. If I get an angle on him, I got enough space to attack the rim. Wouldn't mind seeing a few of them. see a few arcs up plays cut off of that action too. Well, it's just going to be a double foul there. Uh, each guy gets a foul tacked on their ledger for Davis. And so part of this too, Davis, the good thing is the referees were able to calm down the situation, take two minutes looking at the official review. Everybody sort of settles down a little bit. Call a flagrant or anything more than that. So there will only be six seconds on the shot clock. Missouri will inbound it. Keep an eye on Davis and Hodge. Long outlet to DeGray. Uses a Kobe Brown screen. Long three. That's off the front of the rim. Rebound into Anthony Black's hands. Anthony, quiet first half. No points. 0 for 4 from the field. And there will be a foul. As Black elevates, he'll head to the free throw line. It's been a tough night for Black. The difference in the first two minutes of this half and what Anthony Black just did there is what he didn't do in the first half. The first half, Arkansas is walking the ball. They're not being the atta in attack mode. Uh, you saw that first lift, Jordan Walsh attack. Anthony Black says, I'm going to go put my head down get to the rim. If somebody steps in front of me, so be it. But I'm going to force the action. Boy, Black can't get anything to go through the cylinder. He's missed all four of his shots. Three of them have been from behind the arc. And this is his first free throw attempt. One assist and three turnovers for a young man averaging over 12 points, five rebounds. He's ninth in the conference in assists, and almost four. Mm -hmm. He came in as considered the number one point guard in the country. And, of course, a five-star performer. See, at 6'7", sees over the defense. Great defender. Four-point game. Chameleon to the basket. Nice move. You're looking at a transfer from Cleveland State, a graduate transfer. Play a lot of minutes in college basketball. Again, that space, great spacing with Missouri offense gives you a whole lot of room to penetrate. Mitchell. See a little bit more direct line drives to the basket by the Hogs. Kobe Brown. We're going to say a tie. Missouri. Heck of a defensive effort by Makai Mitchell. That's not easy. Well, Kobe Brown faces you up. Good timing. And you got a hand in there, too. There's Otter. With a tall temper, can't get it to go. There's Brown pounding underneath, can't come up with the rebound. Back. One of the few times Arkansas has been able to run. Pinion for three. <laughs> Joseph Pinion, you can tell. He's much more confident in this game. Catch and shoot, no hesitation. He has matched his career high with 10. He's played 11 minutes or 14 minutes off that bench. Arkansas on a 29 to 13 run since they fell behind by 17 with 9.30 to go in that first half. And Pinion 
I've been impressed. Young man's not afraid to stick his nose in to some trouble on the defensive end, and he's knocked down a couple of really big shots. 6'5", good size, highly ranked recruit coming out of Arkansas. The, the threat of having a shooter on the floor is, is important for this Arkansas offense. Just the threat of having that guy for the Missouri defense to know, okay, where is he? And that's going to create some opportunities. Arkansas has made six straight shots. Nine of their last 12 after a, what was a, just, I mean, there's no other way to put it. It was an abysmal first 15 minutes of, of this game offensively. Arkansas's defense has come out and challenged everything from Missouri as well. Kobe Brown, there's a foul on the floor, so he couldn't even hear the whistle. So, so the other interesting thing here is you've got Chameleon, who is a senior, played a lot of college basketball, going against Pinion, freshman, right? Yeah. you got Nick Honor, played a lot of college minutes going against Anthony Black, a freshman. It's, just inter it's a fun dynamic to watch the craftiness of the, the old times. Sean East working against Walsh as well. A by Mitchell. That'll get Kobe Brown to the free throw line. He's juiced up too, Kobe Brown. We don't see much of that from Kobe. He's a business-like guy, but you get him isolated, and he's got tons of skill, man. Good ball handling skills. Oh, he is out of bounds there at right foot. Producer Todd Jones all over the replay. TJ. TJ. Like it. So Kobe Brown gets a free throw to go down. Talking to Kobe today a little bit about what's the difference between what Coach Gates is asking of him versus what Coach Martin asked of him the last couple of years. And he says, really, it's not much. It's the fact that he gets to play positions one, two, and three. Four and five for Coach Gates, and he was just playing four and five for Coach Martin. Yeah. And you can see it, though. There are times when Kobe Brown, over his career, give the ball, he makes the right decision. And if there's one way to quiet a crowd, get to the free throw line. And so credit Coach Gates calling that play. Kobe understanding what he needed to do to, to get a bucket and then that raise it back around. Evo Davis threw it over the bench. A little bit too quick. Yeah. Uh, decision making there and, and part of that too is, is him understanding his opinion which way that's sort of a timing play right there here's Nick Andre the senior graduate transfer came in from Clemson Sean East the national junior college player of the year last year he is bumped by Walsh on the baseline and that'll get us to our under 16 timeout it is getting feisty, physical, and fun here inside Bud Walton Arena. You call your agent with a simple question, only to get sent to voicemail again. We pick up the phone. I should get this. <laughs> Hello, this is Sam. How can I help you? Yes, I'm glad I'm not a robot, too. Like I said, we pick up the phone because it's ringing. That's simple human sense. Ask your independent agent if auto owners make sense for you. Hello, this is Sam. Adventure X Card from Capital One gives you premium travel benefits, like two times miles on every purchase. The noise canceling. You're being too loud. Thank you. Good choice. Ooh. My lucky number. Earn five times miles on flights. Sure you're staying. Going up? And 10 times miles on hotels through Capital One Travel. Plus, get access to over 1,300 airport lounges. Right line, please. And maybe see the one and only Taylor Swift. Capital One, what's in your wallet? Gatorade Fit. Fitness starts from the inside. Out. 
get healthy, real hydration. And no added sugar, artificial sweeteners, or added colors. Gatorade Fit. Healthy, real hydration today helps you fuel tomorrow. Well, we've got some football coming your way. If you weren't paying attention, over 20 million people watching the semifinals. And, well, it comes down to the finals Monday night, 7.30, Georgia TCU from way out west, SoFi Stadium. Um, what do you like? We'll go with the Georgia Bulldogs. Yeah, yeah, is man, there any other? Right, well, we kind of have to, I guess. Uh, uh, by law. Guys. By, yeah. by law, we have to. Right, right. <laughs> However, I picked yeah, that independently yeah. of anything. <laughs> I did a bunch of research. I tell you what, the, the semifinals were so much fun. If this championship game comes even anywhere close to what we saw on New Year's uh, Eve, we're going to have one heck of a game. I, I just, uh, I'm excited about it. I just, uh, it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be a, a great night of football. We've had a, an interesting day of basketball. Yeah. Uh, here in Fayetteville. Again, Missouri opened up a 17-point first-half lead. Arkansas has been clawing away. They've cut it down to one, looking for their first lead of the game, but they got to get a stop right here. 15-52 to go in the game. Here's Kobe Brown, double team to Hodge. Honor for three. Well, that's just good offense, you know, and that's, again, play through Kobe Brown. Demands that double team in the corner. Great spacing, quick passes. Evo Davis. Shot clock at 12. Tries to get it inside. And Mitchell gets his own miss. Can't get it to go the third time. It's a challenge. Who else is up there helping your point guard, Anthony Black, on the offensive glass? Walsh doesn't like it. That'll be number four on George Walsh. And that is big news for a team that has a really short bench. Well, Ricky Council has got the ability to explode comes back in this game. And George has been playing with a ton of energy and effort to get that offensive glass today. Council's had a really tough day. Boy, look at Pena get down and dirty. Coming up with the basketball, still has it. Off the block. Council! One-point game. There's a play to get Ricky Council going. I think we just saw it. How about the effort by Pinion on the floor? Kobe Brown to the basket. Blocked by Mitchell. Davis, reverse, and the Hawks have their first lead of the night. And here's Joseph Pinion comes in. Great adjustment by Coach Must. Starts him in the second half. It pays off. Gets on the floor. Now we Ricky Collins. We talk about how to get him going. Get him in transition. Makai Mitchell on Colby Brown. And 
and then the Hogs are off to the races. That's where they're best. And this right here is the result of getting your call, getting comfortable on the floor, catch and shoot, pinion again. No hesitation. And his teammates looking for him. They know Joseph Pinion's got it going. Credit coach Eric Musselman recognizing, let's get Pinion, start him in the second half. Conversation at halftime clearly from Coach Musselman was, guys, we're going to pressure out, we're going to attack the basket, and with Pinion out there, he gives you, he stretches that defense because of the threat of three-point shot. And Coach Muss has put Makai Mitchell on Kobe Brown. Of course, no Ronnie DeGray out there like they started the game, but I thought that has paid off for Coach Muss's defense. Kobe Brown, strong move. The tap won't go. Now, Carter had his hand on it for a second. And it belongs to Arkansas. Comes the freshman, Aiden Shaw, to check in. Ooh, he looked like one off one number 15. Yeah. Very fortunate break for Arkansas. Davis, a little out of control. Maybe he was in control. Just looked that way. Well, these folks are on their feet inside the Wall Arena. I think Missouri stirred up a hornet's nest. <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> and Arkansas's defense is pushing out a lot further out that three-point line now. Active hands. Shaw. No good. Tapped around. Here's Golston. Comes up with the basketball. Gets it to Shaw. That won't go. And rebound to Mitchell. Ty Mitchell's done a great job of just controlling that paint. You're not getting anything in there with him getting a hand on it. Mitchell. And a hole by Golston on that entry pass. For Golston, that'll be his second. So recognize the mismatch that Mitchell had. And he was smart enough to just hold off the defender long enough. Get your hand up. Mitchell. Oh, couldn't get it to go. Tapped around. And who's it going to belong to? Arkansas. Hawks on this 9-0 run. Boy, Missouri's just hit one of their last nine field goal attempts. And they, they, they haven't been able to get, they've got shots at the rim. They haven't been able to secure some defensive rebounds. Kept a lot by honor. Pull up three. No good. Look, shot flying. Here's Golden. It's a Kick out, council for three. Sean East will come out of there with it. This is where he's dangerous in Missouri is in that transition. Dump it into Carter, pump fake. What a pass, he just passed him open. That, that, that's what Missouri wants to do though, let's get that transition, defense on their heels. Sean East is good enough to score or make that pass. Uh, Davis threw it away. Davis has his fourth turnover, the 14th of the game for Arkansas. But the Hawks do have the lead at the under-12 timeout. You wouldn't know it by the look on this face, though. <laughs> Every day I work hard and eat what's right for me. Isn't that right, Frank? Frank's my goat. <laughs> no alarms tell me when to snack. <laughs> nice try, Kevin. I don't care about posts and likes. I mean, who am I like? Missed a spot. He always does. So my advice? 
Stop looking for advice. And if you want to grab a snack, grab a snack. Who's hungry? There's a reason why it's called the possession. It's not just who has the ball, but the opportunity. From Lexington to Nashville to Columbia, possession means this moment has your name on it. All you have to do is take it. So be ready and don't miss your shot. Pfizer and SEC remind fans there are new COVID-19 boosters designed to help protect against recent Omicron variants. Learn more at vaccines.gov. I'm a screen addicted tween. And if I'm not posting on social media, I don't feel seen. Hey, mom, look. Mom? Oh my God, mom, you gotta look at me. No. Nope. Keeping my eyes on the road is paying off with drivewise. Post about that. Boring. Oh, say cheese. No, thank you. Unblock me. Stop. <laughs> That was awesome! Hey, once you're at, I'll tag you. You drive by some Ball State, say 40% for avoiding mayhem, like me. Well, there has been a ton of mayhem moments, but we've narrowed it down to one of mayhem moments brought to you by All State. Ricky Council didn't get the start of the second half, but he has provided a spark for this Arkansas team that's been really in control since about four minutes to go in the first half. Look, there, there's no doubt they came out in that second half defensively. There was just a little bit more of an edge, and they everything they did from an offensive standpoint started towards the basket. A benefit of that, though, was having Pinion in the game, a legit three-point threat that stretched the defense. But Ricky Council is an explosive player. It, won't, it doesn't take him long to make an impact. And then once he gets going, it's tough to stop him. But really, what, a glaring stat right now is on the glass. 33 to 17. And Arkansas's defensive activity on the, on, on the, at the defensive rim. Missouri's not able to get anything without a couple of hands up there to swap blocking shots or at least affected shots. I just think it, you know, we, we do a lot of non-conference games, and there's some great games in there, but is there anything better than conference basketball? Oh, it's physical. Come on. Tough. Everybody Every. knows it's personal. And it just means more. It just means more. Allie Oop to Shaw. He just elevated a man. He just oh, went up to oh, the oh. He broke his nose in the round. I don't know how many floors they got in the elevator here, but he went up to the top floor. Nice call out of that timeout to quiet this crowd for a moment. Council will try for three, and he gets three! Boy, by they gave him the space. Nine points down for Ricky Council to four. Here's Colston. Carter tries to set a little screen. They'll kick it back out to East. Here's Carter. Ten on the shot clock. Noah spins into a little bit of traffic, lays it up and in. Great stick with it. Understanding your strengths, too, as a basketball player. Maybe you can penetrate with that left hand and spin. It's a nice little right-handed hook. Good pass by Carter right there over the top. The advantage of having a tall passer on time, on target, like who? Tom Brady. Shaw goes straight what up. I mean, I mean, even though he doesn't play in Tampa, you I still really. give Tom Brady a shout out every time we do a game. Every time. TV Tommy Terrific deserves it. <laughs> Especially at this moment in his life. I'm there for you, Tom. <laughs> right. Something tells me Tom could be okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah probably the, he didn't want, if, he, if he was around me, he probably wouldn't. Yeah. The downfall. That's right. <laughs> He'll take a hard pass on that. Davis. Debo. So that shot right there for Debo Davis. Two, three dribbles gets him in rhythm for that shot. So for those who think uh, it may look a little unorthodox or out of the context of the offense, that's how he gets his rhythm for that pull. East, tough shot. And a foul on East trying to get that basketball back. Sean East, that'll be his fourth. Right there, he said, the left-handed Sean East, Joseph Pinion forces him baseline because he knows, right, he's going to want to come back to that left shoulder. Good help, a little late in the help, 
Arkansas baseline, but that's Kamani Johnson. That's the veteran guy you want to come in, bring that physicality, get on the glass, set screens, finish at the rim when I have to. Pinion. Off to Council. feel like I'm repeating myself here, but it's getting in transition, and Ricky Council so strong, gathers himself, two-foot jumper there, got his balance, and he's strong enough, he knows, okay, I'm going to get hit here, let me take my time, gather it, go up strong, a little stop and pop, the difference with that, Dave Neal, I love is he doesn't try to go through the defense all the way in for a layup, just a little stop and pop. Arkansas has hit 17 of their last 25 shots. And the shots they've gotten have been at the rim. Yes, a couple of jump shots. Joseph Pitt, your three-point shooter has been doing what? Shooting three-point shots. <laughs> but yes. right, it's only taken a couple to kind of loosen things up a little bit, and, and that's it. And now, having him on the floor, again, is you've got to, he's got to be accounted for. And, and, and overall, for, for Arkansas, it's a big development because going back to what they have lost in injury in their three-point shooting. Here's Carter. Will pull up off the window. That's nice. He thought he was fouled a couple of times. That's full speed. Stopping on a dime. A nice floor up the back. Tough. Great touch. celebrating 100 years of basketball. And that's where they wow. first play in Schmidt Gymnasium, known to locals as Smitty's Barn. Smitty's Barn. You know, barn. Word has it that Joe Klein got his first assist <laughs> of 22 <laughs> in his career at Smitty's <laughs> Barn. How about this? And they're also Whoa. celebrating 100 years of basketball. And they printed out 100 Arkansas players and their playing cards, and you were one of those 100 cards that were that. printed out. And the fact that they've got you in a defensive, defensive stance yeah, yeah. is remarkable. Because I don't know that you, I, you might have been, somebody must have tripped you or something, and you just <laughs> had to be like that, trying to get up. Well, see, my hands are by my side because I'm trying to bait them. Come into my web, said the spider to the fly. And as soon as he makes that pass, my hand goes up. <laughs> No, you don't find it. No, I'm just wondering how that conversation went with Coach Richardson when you said, Coach, I'm in my spider stick. Yeah, like this. Snatch. Come into my web. So, plus it was about balance. But my hands are up. I'm falling backwards. And did you also do the the hand, like, you know, five fingers connected, make a fist, or five fingers, <laughs> one fist connected? Quote, unquote, you're a beautiful human being. <laughs> Did you get your signed card? No, I didn't. Sure <laughs> Here's 
goes to shot clock at 12. Oh, that's a tough shot. Second in a row. But Missouri is second in the nation. 61% two-point field goals. Arkansas has made life difficult for them. And if they keep making tough twos like that, that's how you get back into this game. That would have dropped even in Smitty's barn. Smitty's barn might have hit the roof. Or I don't know how big the ceiling is. Debo now with double figures. Boy, Nick Dodd is the only one with double figures. Offensive foul. And that is number four on Kobe Brown. That, that was a quick, strong rip through right there. I love it, Kamani Johnson. That's a scout report. That is a scout report play right there. Coach Muss and the staff have a detailed scout report on everybody. I guarantee you they say, well, Kobe Brown catches it here. He's going to rip through, meet him at that baseline. And, and Kamani Johnson carried that out. Six and a half minutes to go, and you're down eight. And with those four fouls, you take Kobe Brown out. I, part of me says you want to keep him on the floor, even with four fouls at this juncture, because another couple of minutes gets this thing might be over. But here's the takeaway. Pavilion. Oh, nice layup. Shielded. Can't get off the basketball. And the Hawks back the other way in a hurt. Council gets his own bet. Boy, he gets fouled a couple of times. So heck, a free throw line. He's so athletic and strong as you can't stop from getting to the rim. Now, if you're making this one, but you're not going to stop from getting to that spot. And if there's something else that has hindered the Hogs, 5 of 10 LSU free throws, uh, dare I say 9 of 15. Yeah, 60% tonight at the line. This is a team that in the past has lived with the free throw line. The last couple of years, they've been in the top five in free throw attempts and banks in the country. And hey, don't forget, SEC Gymnastics starts Friday night. The new season coming your way. Alabama is ranked seventh in the Women's Collegiate Gymnastics Association preseason rankings. Once again, gymnastics will take over this very network every Friday night during the season. And this week, we have a non-conference matchup between Michigan State and the Crimson Tide for Coleman Coliseum. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern time. Eight point game. Carter. Damn. Oh, fires deep three. Man, I started losing so bad. He's had a tough night. Six points. Hasn't been able to get a shot up. He comes in leading the team and scoring at over 16 and a half a game. But Arkansas has kept him quiet tonight. Aiden Shaw, freshman. What an athletic move. Two huge plays for him this second half. Caught the alley to dunk, get another offensive rebound, get Missouri another shot at this. Yeah, Shaw, four star recruit. Matter of fact, he's the only true freshman on scholarship <laughs> on this team. We're gonna have one. That's a good yeah. one to have. And a foul. Pinion with a little push off to. Yeah, he got a little push as the ball was in back. And that'll be number four on Pinion. He's had a career high 13 tonight. A couple more games, he's going to figure out how to get away with that and not have it called by the right. official. Uh, you know, those are massive. Fouled out of every game probably three times. So Carter at the free throw line. Come on, Noah. Well, they got to make those with five and a half to go. Uh, if this game will come down to three throws and layups. Old coach Andy Stockton always talked about that. Who's going to get them and who can prevent them? At this stage, Arkansas has been able to prevent a lot of those point blank shots by Missouri. Council with 18 points. There's Black. Let's swing it around. Back to Black. Shot clock for three. Staying in front of the ball. Sometimes it's just as simple as staying in front. 
that's really the first time in the second half we've seen the shot clock kind of desperation shot from Arkansas. In the first half, we saw that three or four times. Touch town, boys. Uh, east west. So north, what north, you got? They've been going north south, catch, <laughs> quick, decisive move, straight to the paint. That time, Missouri did an excellent job of keeping that ball on the three point line, allowing no driving gaps. Sports. The ifs are non-stop. If you're game day ready. If your team can win on the road. If that three-pointer beats the buzzer. If you love the tradition, the rivalry, the edge of your seat action on and off the court, we're right there with you. As the official bank of the SEC. Sorry. We just can't happy with the ifs and sports. We can talk to the ifs. Let's talk money on Monday. New customers get our best deals on all smartphones. That's right. But what if I'm already a customer? Oh, no problem. Hey, Cam. There. Ah. Same deal. Yeah. It's kind of our thing. What if I'm new to AT&T? Cam, can... Oh, nice. Hey. But what about for existing Same customers? Same deal. deal. Is he okay? At AT&T, we give everyone our best deals on every smartphone. Get up to $1,000 off on our most popular smartphones with eligible trade-in. Academy Sports and Outdoors is here for everyone who loves to get out there and have some fun. And with the best brands in the game, we've got what you need to play your way. Shop on the app and pick up in-store today. Have fun out there with Academy Sports and Outdoors. No. Had enough? No. Arthritis. Here. Ask for cream arthritis. Full prescription strength. Reduces inflammation. Thank the gods. Don't thank them too soon. Kick pain in the aspercream. Ricky Council, the fourth, has come alive in this second half. That's for the first half. They'll catch and shoot on the defensive end. Just an explosive athlete. Great timing. Great hands as well. Him out in transition. That's exactly what you want. That's how he started the second half. An explosive dunk for a guy like that. That's how he gets going. Now he feels confident. His offensive game gets into rhythm. Starts making his jump shot. And you see right there the damage he's done in the second half. And as much as he's provided offensively, I think we're seeing the Arkansas defense kind of do their thing. And, you know, we talk a lot about Arkansas and their athletes offensively and stuff. But let's, I mean, the bottom line is they win ball games with their defense. They give up 61 points a game. And for a team that likes to push the ball, that's a heck of a number. And they're doing something to this team that hasn't really happened all year. Matter of fact, look at Missouri's last two games. They've averaged 91 points against Illinois and Kentucky. They're sitting on 61 with 344 to go. <laughs> well, they've got four guys on the floor. Kamani's one, too. But you, Devo Davis, Council, Black, Jordan Walsh, you're talking about three of the top four, excuse me, four of the top defenders in the league. Yeah. I mean, you can make a case for these guys. Uh, that's how tough they are defensively, individually on ball, because of their length and athleticism. Kobe Brown cuts to the basket, and he is fouled. And that's going to go against Kamani Johnson. Great pass. 
This was football, and that was a defensive back. They'll say he never turned his head around, but that rule doesn't apply here. <laughs> no, 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 no. Although Kamani tried yeah. to get up under it. Yeah. Yeah. Brown at the free throw line. Knocking that one home. He's an 80% foul shooter on the year. And, and that will come into play. Mizzou at 75% as a team. Arkansas at 72% as a team. And Missouri leads the conference in free throw percentage. in a one possession game with 331 to play. What'd you say? Free throws and layups? Free throws That's and it. layups. Who can get them? Who can prevent them? Missouri, one timeout remaining. Arkansas has three. Zoom back into that pack. There's just no daylight to get the paint. <laughs> Finally hits a three, his first of the night. Whatever I said, <laughs> open three. Yeah, right. Okay, throw that in the mix. <laughs> throw that in the mix. Yeah. Blend that one away. Yeah. Here's Brown. Ronnie Johnson defending him. Kobe takes it to a double team. They're going to say tie ball. Tie ball. Arrow favors Arkansas. <laughs> that was a strong move by Kobe. See how quick that spin move was. And Johnson beats him right up the room. Ricky Council and Kamani Johnson. Time level activity right there. But that's in the second half. For me, what Arkansas has done is challenged at the rim, making everything difficult for Missouri, who's a really good team at scoring around the rim in the paint. A lot of it in transition, too, though. Council, hop step, lost the handle for a moment. Shaw, I think, is the last one to touch it for Missouri. It'll stay with Arkansas. on the shot clock. Deep three. That one catches the front of the iron. Rebound to honor. Pull up three. No good. Long rebound to East. Takes it himself. Position D. You know the defense will be scrambling. Corner three on the way, no good. Long rebound, Walsh collides with Shaw. Shaw wins about a million. Now. A little two on two game. He's got Honor out to the right, took it himself. So going back to what I said about free throws last, we'll pick it up out <laughs> so, <laughs> Grinding it down, that's, that's what has got Arkansas this lead, was forcing the issue in the paint. We got a really extended Missouri zone right now. Swing it, quick swings. And off the shot clock. It'll be Missouri basketball down four. You know what happens oftentimes people listen up there watch me say, why are you selling fatigue at times? We'll say, let me just shoot this. Yeah. I'm open. Instead of doing, it, do, do, and doing what he's done all night. Council's been driving it in the paint and it's and has been had a lot of success. And then what has it done? It's put Kobe Brown in foul trouble. It's put Missouri in other players in foul trouble. Take six of seven at the line. So here we go. 105 to play. Honor working on Walsh. Off to Carter. Loose ball. Sean East has it.
Sean Easton has just taken it himself. Well, it, 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 that's his game, right? He got it in the sweet spot. Another little floater right there for Sean East. That's what he's looking for. You see the length of Arkansas. If you expose that basketball, man. Ricky Cox is getting a fingertip on it, George Walsh. Devo Davis. I'm going to assume this next offensive possession, you'll see somebody with Arkansas jersey attack, attack the paint. So Johnson to the bench, Pinion back on the floor. Pinion's back in, which now Missouri's got to count for that three-point shooter. Will it open up a driving lane? Pinion. Davis ran right into some trouble and an offensive foul. Kobe Brown took the charge. And for Davis, that'll be his second foul. Play. The attack was right there. You see three Missouri guys setting up. And a kick right there to the corner. I think it might have been Jordan Walsh in there, but Kobe Brown, how about that? Stepping off. No. Listen, this is the play of the game. 37 seconds left. They call this on me. It doesn't matter. I got to make this play. Here's Honor, working on Davis, throws it up, and draws the foul. Davis can't believe it. It looked like to me that Honor did end up push off his right hand, and it looked like Davis tried to get out of the way. Four out of four tonight. That's what we want on the line. He's a leader. He's their floor general. Cool under pressure. He's done a heck of a job handling that pressure from Arkansas today. Honor with a dozen points, three assists, and no turnovers. Leads the conference in assist to turnover ratio. Missed it. Missed it. And a quick foul. And that'll get Arkansas to the free throw line. It's a double bonus situation. So two at the line for the Hawks with 25.7 seconds remaining. Missouri's going to want to extend this game. Coach Gates knows that. Time score situation. So now Missouri subbed in, and they should have had to wait until at least one free throw was taken. So they're getting the players reset, and that's what they do. So Hodge and Noah Carter getting ready to check in for Missouri, but the big shots are right now at the free throw line from Ricky Council, the fourth. And he makes the two possession play. Missouri so quick on make or miss up the floor. Arkansas has got to identify communication. Who do I have? Because they're going to be sprinting up. One timeout left for Missouri. Council, Tommy knocks it home. He's got 22. Tigers got to go in a hurry. Underneath, Sean East wide open. That took four seconds. That's what they do. That's what they do. In enough time where you don't need a three. Smart decision. Make Arkansas make free throws. Come back and sprint up the floor. Another miscommunication. And then maybe you find an open three-point shooter. But if you've got an open look at this point, 19 seconds low, 20 when they score, that's, that's what you do. Well, they got the right guy going to the free throw line. You got your best free throw shooter in Ricky Council, who's eight of nine today at the line. 
sitting on 22 points, as high as 27. That came against Troy. I mean, it, let's be honest. He had a less than stellar first half. He was minus 18 in the first half when he was on the floor in terms of points differential, which is a number you and I both looked at and said, I don't know if we've ever seen a minus 18 and a half. But things have dramatically changed for him in the second half. He got that dunk, and he's just got it. So that's Wags back. Here's Honor. Carter. Trying to draw some contact. And a push by Hodge. Council walking away. And he'll head back to the free throw line. And those are basically ice this thing right here. And he hadn't already iced it at the line. And the crowd showing their appreciation. Let's go back to this. Missouri was up 17 in the first half, and Arkansas looked like they didn't have a clue on offense right. against the zone of Missouri. And what a difference the second half has been. It did. Coach Muss inserts Joseph Pinion. Makes a shot. Stretches the defense. Coach Muss comes back out with him in the second half. Certainly Arkansas got his message at halftime. Guys, we're hesitating. Catch and go. Good things will happen when we attack that paint. There is Nick Honor and Missouri's taking a timeout. Dennis Gates not pleased about something. I'm sure. Oh, I think I think he said he wanted the timeout earlier. After it went through yeah. the basket, after it went through the loop. Regardless, hey, kudos to Arkansas for a changing things up a little bit and figuring out what Missouri is doing. But their defense has been on point in the second half. Missouri's only been held under 80 points twice this year. They came in averaging almost 89 points a game. And Arkansas has held them under 70 to this point. You know who else has played well tonight? The DJ, the in-house DJ. This guy's a legend. I mean, it's, I think he's got speakers in the floor. <laughs> the bass is in the floor. It's lifting us up and down. It's amazing. Makai Mitchell's played well defending that paint. He's yeah. been everywhere. I think Coach Moss deciding to keep Mitchell in the paint because Missouri does such a good job of having five outside, keep that lane open. Coach Moss says, I'm going to put Makai in the paint. This way we're going to be able to affect anything. Uh, Makai Mitchell has a good minute to defend Kobe Brown in the second half. But this is a tough Missouri team, man. It's, you, you, you see why they've had the kind of success they've had this year. Play well together, take care of the basketball. Veteran team, tough. Coach Moss and staff did a good job of getting the Hogs' attention at halftime. Sean East at the buzzer will throw it down, but Arkansas responds mightily after a tough loss to LSU and a disappointing first half against this Missouri team, and they will win it 74-70. That is our final score. What do you make of this one? Well, Arkansas had to work on the glass. Uh, they had to get up in transition, and, and they were able to do I think they overwhelmed and wore down. Missouri's defense, a tough, connected Missouri defense. And, and Joseph Pinion come out had the game of his life just long enough for Ricky Council to get going in the second half. So they end up waving off the last, the last dunk is waved off. So it'll be a 74-68 final score. Boy, what a ball game. Arkansas goes to 12 and 2. Missouri will go to 12 and 2. So for Pat Bradley, the rest of our crew, I'm Dave Neal saying so long from Fayetteville. Time to get you to the studio. PB, it's all yours.
Thank you, Dave. You didn't seem like necessarily the happiest of campers there in Bud Walton Arena, Waken making his way over to the interview. Yeah, ultimate competitor, competitor absolutely. Um, we saw Missouri get off to, oh, what, 17-point lead in the first half. Uh, how were they able to get that quick start, and what did Arkansas do in the second half? Well, it, it was their 2-3 their defense. It really mixed up. Arkansas's comfortability with their offense, finding good shots, their confidence. The way Missouri didn't allow easy paint touches, the ball to get to the middle mm -hmm. and destroy that. And and also, Missouri did a fantastic a fantastic job just getting the ball up and going, finding open shots on the offensive side that uh, uh, at one point, Arkansas just didn't know what to do, how to find where the offense was going to come from. Eric Musselman is one of the best second-half or in-game adjusters in college basketball. Mm -hmm. I've seen him do it throughout his entire career. He did that today. They were somewhat passive in the first half. I think his younger players were trying to analyze the defense versus just being attackers. And they attacked, in particular, Ricky Council in that second half. I like the adjustment. I like the aggressiveness. And give a lot of cre credit to Razorback Nation. I <laughs> thought that fan base really helped out. There. I was getting ready to say, and this is crazy. This came from Hogstats. Um, they, they get a bunch of stats over there. I saw it on Twitter that this is what, uh, eight games uh, at Arkansas and Bud Walton Arena that they have been down at half and come back to win. Eight straight mm -hmm. times that they've done that, talking about those adjustments and the fans getting behind it. Um, did your opinion of either one of these teams change tonight going into what you thought you would see? Yeah, I, I thought Arkansas looked a lot better tonight. Okay, uh, well, we'll talk to Coach Eric Musselman about that coming up in just a second. didn't seem like necessarily the happiest of campers there in Bud Walton Arena, Waken making his ultimate way over to the interview. Yeah, ultimate, ultimate competitor, competitor, absolutely. Um, we saw Missouri get off to, oh, what, 17-point lead in the first half? Uh, how were they able to get that quick start, and what did Arkansas do in the second half? Well, it, it was their 2-3 their defense. It really mixed up. Arkansas's comfortability with their offense, finding good shots, their confidence, the way Missouri didn't allow easy paint touches, the ball to get to the middle mm -hmm. and destroy that. And and also, Missouri did a fantastic, a fantastic job just getting the ball up and going, finding open shots on the offensive side that uh, uh, at one point, Arkansas just didn't know what to do, how to find where the offense was going to come from. Eric Musselman is one of the best second half or in-game adjusters in college basketball. Mm -hmm. I've seen him do it throughout his entire career. He did that today. They were somewhat passive in the first half. I think his younger players were trying to analyze the defense versus just being attackers. And they attacked, in particular, Ricky Council in that second half. I like the adjustment. I like the aggressiveness. And give a lot of cre credit to Razorback Nation. I <laughs> thought that fan base really helped out. There. I was getting ready to say, and this is crazy. This came from Hogstats. Um, they, they get a bunch of stats over there. I saw it on Twitter that this is what... Uh, eight games uh, at Arkansas and Bud Walton Arena that they have been down at half and come back to win. Eight straight mm -hmm. times that they've done that, talking about those adjustments and the fans getting behind it. Um, did your opinion of either one of these teams change tonight going into what you thought you would see? Yeah, I, I thought Arkansas looked a lot better tonight. Okay, uh, well, we'll talk to Coach Eric Musselman about that coming up in just a second.